Hello and welcome to another episode of Dun Dun Tech. Today we've got an unboxing for you because I'm treating myself, I'm being Santa Claus to myself. I've worked about 500 hours overtime this year and now is the time to splash some of that cash. So I'm upgrading to a M5. And to do that with, as you can see, I've gone with the MSI Mag Tomahawk X870 motherboard. So I thought we'll have a look at it together, see what's in the box, and then we'll also see what the board looks like and what headers and things you can do with the motherboard. So let's have a look. In the box, I've not actually had a look at this yet, so there we go. We've got box in a box with our Wi-Fi aerial, our shark fin. Anything else? No, that's that. And then we've got our motherboard, which we will have a look at in a second. Sorry for the crunching noises. And we have SATA cables, stickers, always want stickers. We've got a one, two, three, three PCIe NVMe risers and one NVMe screw. We've got our, uh, that's a special cable for the motherboard. We'll go through that in a moment. And that is a USB. That's another special cable for the motherboard. We've got a tool to put the standoffs for the NVMe drives in. And we've got a USB stick for our BIOS updates, which is nice. No idea how large it is. If you can use it for anything else, we'll find out. And our European Union regulatory notices. So if we have a quick look at the motherboard, uh, we'll go through what features it has and what it looks like and why I went for this motherboard. So if we start from the obvious, we've got one, two, three absolutely huge heat sinks. We've also got the heat sinks here as well for the NVMEs. We have our AM5 sockets here. Our power delivery is 14 by 12 by one. No, 14 by two by one, sorry. 14 by 12 by one would be fantastic. We have two eight pin power connections up here. We have our main 24 pin here. Our four slots for our DDR5 RAM. It supposedly can run up to 8400 MHz transfer speed, but we'll see how that actually works with the BIOS and what it will allow XMP to do. We have our top lane here for our Gen 5 NVMe. Second is also a Gen 5 NVMe, and three and four are Gen 4. So our top slots here, which are Gen 5, if you was to be running an 8000 series processor in this, then it will drop to Gen 4 as they're unable to actually run Gen uh, PCIe 5 speeds. Our bottom two don't get affected as they're only Gen 4 anyway. So with our top PCIe slot where you would place your graphics card, here we have a PCIe 5 by 16 speed, but that's only if you're running a 7000 or 9000 series processor. If you're running the 8400, 8600 or 8700 processors, it will drop down to a PCIe 4 by 8 lanes. And if you are running the 83 and 8500, I believe it is, it drops down again even further to PCIe 4 by 4. So you need to be aware of that, depending on what processor you're using to measure your expectations of what speeds you will be getting. If we drop down to our second PCIe line, we are running here a... This lane is running at a PCIe 3 by one and we drop down to the bottom one, which is a PCIe 4x4. So you will get the speeds here for your capture cards or for your network cards, whatever you're using here. They'll be absolutely fine to get the speeds that you're gonna to need to do that. But obviously this is the important one, making sure that if you're using a graphics card in here that you are gonna get the full 16 lanes to get the full performance out of your system. 
And then if we move on, we will then have our CPU fan here for the header, our pump fan header here. We have six system fans. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. We also have our, and here we have our USB-C header that also gives fast charge for up to 27 watts of power to your case. We have two, four SATA ports here, two USB three ports here. We then have two USB two ports here and here. We also have one, two, three, five volt ARGB cables, and we also have one 12 volt ARGB cable as well, depending on what system of fans and pumps you are running, you will be covered here as well. And then we get on to a new cable, a new header. It's called the EasyCon. It's apparently gonna make your life wonderfully easy, but I don't know how. It's mainly if you're running the MSI fans and it's all built in. That's what one of the special cables was earlier. Let's actually open it and see what we get. And look at it together. So you have your connection there, which plugs in, and it gives you access to a 12 volt, a 5 volt, and fan headers. So if you wanted things away from the motherboard and you wanted to just route this to behind the case, actually that's not such a bad idea and it could be quite a nice setup if you're running a system like that. Personally, I use at home the Lian Li Unifan, so I don't need to worry about any of that being in my way, so I don't think I will end up using this at the moment unless anything changes. And then what we also have, we have our standard four debug lights here, but what I'm really excited for, and I've never had a motherboard with this, is actual numbers. Numbers, I might know what I'm doing, because this, I just spend ages faffing around with RAM normally, because that's what it normally says. With this one, I'll actually know what it is, and I'll actually be able to maybe resolve things quicker than half an hour. We'll see, uh, probably not, but maybe. And the more, the easiest thing for me now is we have our button to lock and unlock your graphics card. So when you've got large coolers and large graphics cards and you've got to try and get your hand in between to hit the release button that's there, you can now just open and take it out then put it back in, lock it, and you're set. Wonderful, can't believe it. Also one last thing, down here we do have another PCIe connector 8 pin to give extra power to your PCIe lanes here for your NVMEs and your additional cards depending on what you would like to put in there. So, and now we go to the rear I.O. First of all, we have a flash BIOS button here, which is fantastic because that means that you do not need to have a processor in the motherboard to be able to update your BIOS. That is very handy, especially as if you're like me and you only have the single processor, then you are able to flash it to the newest BIOS before you even put that processor in. We also have a clear CMOS button up here, which is good for me because quite often over the years of popping a battery out is not the most fun thing to do in the world. Uh, HDMI here. Uh, one and two USB four running at a speeds of up to 40 gigabits a second which is absolutely rapid and I can't wait to try and test it out not that I have anything else that is at speed so I won't really get to see it got a USB 10 gig here three USB threes that are five gigs each four USB twos we have one 10 gig USB C here another 10 gig USB three here 5 gig LAN networking which is absolutely incredible and we have our aerial adapters here for our Wi-Fi 7 aerial we've got our digital audio here mic and headphones in and out so that's it it's pretty simple it's pretty nice let's go to the review so why did I go for this motherboard well at the end of the day I wanted something new and I had the money available to me to be able to go and buy something relatively affordable. Um, it was £260 from Amazon. I did get it before Black Friday. It is now sold out and it is currently as a filming, it's sold out on Amazon. And 
it seems a bit better than the X670s. The RAM hopefully will be more stable at a higher speed, up to 8400 supposedly. We'll have to wait and see about that. And another little thing, it says Arsenal on the motherboard. And I'm an Arsenal fan. I couldn't say no to it. Um, but on a more serious note, hopefully I'll be able to give a review of this in a few weeks. Hopefully. Currently running a different system and me and Adam are going to be going against each other with our systems as they're both very similar. We're both running a RX 6950 XT. Different variants of it, which is going to be part of the challenge. Same processor, the 5800X. But then different motherboards, different cooling, different CPU coolers, different cases, different RAM. So it's going to be interesting to see against each other as a bit of fun who can overclock higher and who can come out victorious. I hope it'd be me, but I doubt it. And I think it'd actually be Alan. He's more of a geek and he's better at the um, overclocking and stuff than I am. So we will have to wait and see for that one, but that'll be a fun video coming to you soon. But until then, hopefully we'll see you soon. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video.